Hi folks, no more cabbage moth, the perfect blowtorch circles, and how to construct a netted hoop tunnel for your cabbage beds. Would you take a look at this folks, and please stay with us till the very end. You will be surprised, pleased, and very glad you did. Here is our latest full length video. Hi folks, and welcome back to our channel, GBL, the old church, five acre homestead. Well, if you are like me, you have started your cabbage plants from seeds this spring and you have been nurturing them all the while and getting ready to plant them outside in your garden. But you are dreading that darn cabbage moth. It's coming and you need to protect your cabbage plants from that moth. Please follow along folks and we will show you just how to make your very own hoop netted tunnel to protect your precious precious cabbage plants from that dreaded moth. You will need to watch to the very end of this video folks. The process starts here. The first step folks is to go to a local hardware store or to a plumbing store and pick up some of this one half inch white PEX hose to make your hoops. And because the PEX hose is one half inch in diameter, you will need the drill holes in the frames of your raised beds using a 5 8 inch drill bit. Next, you will need to unroll the PEX hose and cut it to length. Using a measuring tape and a sharpie marker, I measured off 8 foot lengths of this white PEX hose for our hoops. The next task is to cut the pexels to length and for this you will need a pair of shears or a pair of pexels cutters. Now with your hoop ready you can try it in the frame of your bed to see if it fits. It should be a snug fit. But before we can permanently attach the hoops to the bed frame you need to aerate your soil and remove any weeds. With the soil aerated and the weeds all removed, it is time now to level off the bed. You're doing a grand job there, Gary, even if I have to say so myself. Now, turn that rake up on its end and level off the bed and press down the soil ever so gently.
Be sure to follow this process for the entire bed surface and keep in mind that we will be adding black weed fabric to the top of this bed and that step is coming up very very shortly in this video. Our raised beds, folks, are around eight foot long, so we are cutting our weed fabric to exactly eight feet. And here, folks, we laid the four by eight piece of weed fabric on the top of the bed and we are attaching it and keeping it in place using some hoax strips and our brad nailer with one and a half inch brad nails. Be sure to even out the black weed fabric across the bed so that you have enough on each side to attach it firmly. When ready, attach the oak strip with just one bread nail and then go to the other end of the bed and use one bread nail down there as well. Follow this process and attach the oak strips in the corners first and then go back and fill in with more brad nails along the lengths of the oak strips. Be sure to gently stretch out the black weed fabric on the top of the bed.
with the four corners attached, it is now time to do the centers. And now, with the centers completed, it is time to start adding some more bread nails along the lengths of the oak strips. It is time now to attach the oak strips to the four foot ends of these raised beds. You're almost done now, Gary boy. The hard work is soon finished. Next, we're going to make a grid on top of this raised bed using some nylon twine. So for this process, you're gonna to need to get yourself some twine. You're gonna need a measuring tape, some small one inch screws, your drill with a Robinson's bit and a Sharpie marker to measure off exactly where to put the twine. For this four foot by eight foot bed, I measured off and marked off every eight inches on the frame of this raised bed. That's where I will be attaching my screws at each of the eight inch marks. Thank <laughs> you. 
do not drill the screws home, ladies and gentlemen, and instead, make sure you leave about half of the screw visible. Continue by attaching and drilling the screws on the other end of this raised bed as well and continue the same process on both sides. And be sure to follow the same 8 inch intervals between your screws or whatever distance you choose for your raised bed. It is now time to attach the twine to the heads of those screws, going the full length of this bed several, several times. Looking good there, Gary, and it's beginning to take shape. Now, it's time to do the same thing with the lengths of this raised bed. And again, mark off the same eight inch intervals along the full length of the bed frame using your Sharpie marker and your measuring tape. Great job with the multiplication lesson there, Gary. And you should know how to multiply. You just finished your 31st year teaching school. 
While you watch me mark off the 8 inch intervals along the length of this raised bed, I thought I would say a big thank you to all of you for stopping by this video and for always tuning in to our YouTube channel, GBL The Old Church 5 Acre Homestead. If this is the first time that you've came across one of our YouTube videos, thank you so very, very much for tuning in. And I want to say, please stay to the very end of this video. There's lots happening and you will learn a lot about creating a hooped net for your cabbage plants and you'll learn how we use a blowtorch. Yes, a blowtorch to make perfect circles in this black fabric on this raised bed. You will want to stay to the very end of this video, folks. Time now to attach the screws to the length of this raised bed. And in doing so, make sure that the screws are inserted about halfway. Leave enough so you can attach the twine. Come on, Gary, get that other side done. We are eager to see what you do with the blowtorch.
as you can see, the grid on this raised bed is beginning to take shape. And as you can also see, my little helper, James, Sir Coolalot, has decided to join and help me this morning. And here's the exciting part in this video, folks. We are using a blowtorch to make those perfect circles in the black weed fabric for our precious cabbage plants. Follow along.
There's no need to do too much explaining or too much talking in this part of the video, folks. Using the blowtorch and the cover from a mason jar is working out quite well to make these perfect circles in the black weed fabric. Follow, follow along. It is time now to attach and secure the half inch PEX hose hoops to the frame of the raised bed. And for this process, you will need one and a half inch screws, washers, a wooden block that's three inches long, a drill with a pre drill bit, and another drill with a Robinson's bit. The ends of the PEX hose hoops are attached firmly to the side of the raised bed facing us. We will now need to do the same thing on the opposite side. And with all four hoops firmly attached to the raised bed, it is now time to get at the netting. And first, we are going to attach the netting to the ends of the bed first. And the netting that we are using is plastic chicken wire with a one centimeter size mesh. We are firmly attaching this netting to the hoops with zip ties and we're cutting it with a regular pair of scissors.
with both ends of the hoop frames covered in the netting, it is now time to cut a full length piece for the entire length of the raised bed. And for this, you will need to cut the netting a little longer than eight feet to allow for overlapping. And you will need to cut three pieces that are a little longer than eight feet for this raised bed. You will need to begin by attaching the net along the top of this hooped frame. And begin by using a zip tie on both ends first. Next, attach a strip of wood along the top of this raised bed, making sure that it's a little more than eight feet. Pre-drill and attach some screws. With the wooden strip attached with the screws, it is time to use more zip ties to secure the netting. And with the top netting completed, it is time now to head the side nettings as well. And folks, please do not be cheap with those zip ties. Use lots. And when attaching the side netting, be sure to come down about halfway down the hoop. You will want the netting to be able to flip up to the top of the hoop like a door. And be sure to add another wooden strip to the edge of the side netting using zip ties. This wooden strip will help in the lifting and lowering of the side netting and it will also add weight to keep the netting down and in place along the edge of the raised bed. Now Gary, I think this looks pretty good. I think we're ready to begin planting our precious cabbage plants and I think we are ready for that cabbage moth when it arrives. Time to get planting now folks and in this bed we are companion planting turnip, cabbage, and cauliflower. And please join us, folks. We would appreciate that so very, very much. You coming along with us as we plant cabbage, turnip, and cauliflower in this very protected raised bed from the dreaded, dreaded white moth or cabbage moth. All finished folks, we have this bed now completed with cabbage, cauliflower and turnip and you might notice that a few of the plants look a bit wilted and in fact that is quite normal when transplanting young tender plants outside and in the ground for the very first time. In a day or two they should look much much better.
Time now for a good soaking of water. With the watering done, let's take one final look at this raised bed. Taking another look at these young tender plants, ladies and gentlemen, there are a few that do look a little bit wilted. And I want to say again that that is quite normal for young tender transplants to look a little bit wilted when they are taken from their very little containers and put into the ground for the very first time. In a few days time though, they will adjust to their new home and look quite strong and healthy. By the time this video goes to here and you get to see it, it will be probably a week. And we will end and conclude this video with a short video clip showing you just how these young tender plants have adjusted to their new home in just one week. You will be surprised at how strong and healthy they look, as I said, in just one week in their new home in this raised protected bed with the netting from the dreaded white moth. And now folks, and just before we get to that final clip, we want to say thank you so very, very much for tuning in and watching this video and watching all the videos on our YouTube channel. Betty and I thank you so much for following along and being a part of our YouTube journey, our restoration journey of the old church, Five Acre Olmstead. And here's the clip, folks. Enjoy. So folks, it's been about a week now since we constructed and completed this raised bed with the black weed fabric and the uh, netted hoop over the top. And we used our blowtorch to make these perfect circles and planted our cabbage, our cauliflower, and our turnip. And recall uh, in the video that when we planted these, uh, these vegetables, they looked a little bit wilted. But here, a week later, just look at them now. They look so nice and strong and healthy. I'm gonna raise the door to this raised bed now so that we can have a look inside. So as I said, it's been about a week now since we planted these young tender cabbage, cauliflower and turnip and they have adjusted to their new home in this raised bed with the black weed fabric and the netted uh, protection over the top from that dreaded white moth or cabbage moth. I think these plants are going to do very, very well in this bed, in this garden. And from time to time, we'll, uh, we'll share with you an update on how these are doing. Our cabbage, our cauliflower, and our turnip companion planted together in this raised bed. Thanks for watching, folks.